happening. It's been a while since we've all got it together. So thought we just went through a few projects. Good picture. Yeah. Actually, if we drive around a bit, it is uh projects come along really well. We got um that's a quick roll. We got five things we're gonna look at. Uh Wastewater extension, we had that bid. Contracts, we need to have release. Some projects that were bidding, a few project updates, and then a new project that we just want to introduce to you, see if everybody's on point. First one is the Pepper Creek Wastewater Extension. You know, that's for the Meta. We did a little bit of a redesign on it. Used to go through the McLean properties and Guys into the line. Our funding line had 2.9, and that was an adjusted number down, if you remember. It was much higher than that before. Um, David's KPA to OPC was 2.5, and then those are the bids that we had. And Patton, as you can see, is the low bid at 1.7. So we picked up some good dollars there. So we need to get this on to our Full board, but I'm passing on to the council so we can get this project moving. Any questions on it? Again, that's the little piece there that will get us the first piece of the um, meta, really the big sewer line part. Second, we're going to go through contracts that need to be released. And if anybody's got any questions, you know, we're just trying to get you an update, really. Don't, Make me sit here and talk all the time. The, the, and so that timing all still works with Meta, with their delay and all that sort of thing, and get you up the head to get it in. Actually, one of the things that probably got the bid down so much was having time. If you remember, the last one was a, a three month, four month yeah. window, and now they got all the way to Christmas. So that's what's, yeah, what's your that contract date? We have eight months on it. Yeah, eight months. So doubled, so. doubled the time. But, you know, I'm sure they've got low bids. You know, they had the they were the ones that got the first bid, right? Correct. So they probably were sitting on a bunch of plates. That's what David and I were saying. I'm sure that they, had, if you remember, it was a four month deal. So I'm sure, I'm sure they're sitting on a bunch of plates. Right. Out there. Do I? Sorry. Do yeah. The second project, sewer wastewater project, is the Pepper Creek. That's the that's that line we put in there. Goes up to the burn track. So we need to get this under design to get out in front of Ocho and everything else that is going along that um, that will be feeding into this. And so this is really an upsizing project in uh, designs 308. It was our funding line, our proposal is 299.8. Um, the related numbers to the projects are the construct, uh, construction administration and then construction. Again, this one we want to just get out front of and, and start the design so that we are ready to go when we need that line. It just is an update. It's, you can tell to the north, it's the burn track. And then that's the one that came all the way through by HEB and then down past McLean. So it is one we'll be connecting into and a lot of lines go into it. It's just an upgrade process. Any questions on it? David, what's the expected construction time frame for that once it's designed and lit? Design? And no, the construction. construction. No, oh. no, just construction. Construction. Um, I think though we're probably in the 10 month range on it. Thank you. Um, but I think we'll also be ready to bid pretty quickly. Okay, right, thank you. A new project that we added. Um, in our last financing plan update was uh, 250 for David to be in the process to update us on both the Dozier sewer plants and the um, Temple Belton. Do you remember we just wanted to get the zone one to get a, a good ahead of uh, looking at BOD, looking at capacity, looking at timing frames for uh, permitting and just really get our arms around what would it take for us to make sure we're out in front as you know 
uh, most of the companies we're looking at are food service and or advanced manufacturing. And when you're looking at those two, it just takes uh, both of them are high water users. And when you use a lot of water, that means you get rid of a lot of water. We just wanted this zone to get our arms around it. So we really want to get this at the proposals for 246,290. And we had put the 250 in there to get the first started. So again, we want to get this contract going so we can get out in front. Can we share any of that with Dolphin and BRE, or is that just what they're doing? Uh, I'm sure in the cost and that whole menu, you know, that whole process of that plant there, that whatever the quarter may do, but we're trying to make sure that we're just out in front and we understand what's going on. If there's anything that we would have to add to that, that uh, we would be prepared for. And I'm not so sure they would share. I'm, I'm out of limb here. Like, so you guys know, yeah, I, was, I would say wonderful. if we're going to do anything to that plant because of the use we need, then we would just go ahead and possibly fund what we need. The planning would be 100% on, on our side. Um, we're not asking them to participate in the cost of that. Um, if we get to the point, I would say when we get to the point that we're constructing improvements, um, we do have a cost share with them. And by just having David get his numbers, he's sort of touched base with the project group at, a, at other meetings just as to what's going on at both plants, but we really want to just take it to the next level. So as you can tell, the VR plan, uh, plan has a, upgrade going on right now and got some other permits coming so it's a really it was a good update to the project group when we had it and we want to continue to make sure we bring all of the potential upgrades and, and timings to the zone so that it doesn't become a hindrance to uh, bringing people into the, uh, the industrial park david do um staff have that proposal please and all these proposals we're doing do they have all of them yes thank you uh, as you know, the outer loop north is finally, um, well, I think we're close to being able to bid this out. Uh, BNSF, they did give us all the comments. They even answered all of them very quickly and got them back to them. So it is sitting on their desk. Uh, pretty sure we're close to getting the file. It wasn't any big deals, right? So you haven't heard back from them yet? We have not. We clean them every week. Yeah. That's the last little deal is for them to get it. So we're really going to need the bidding and construction pay services on this, which uh, is the 1.237. Uh, construction is 34.6. What we got into the bud, uh, budget, we're hoping for a May, June uh, bid. Um, this is one we're, you know, always a little nervous on. It's a big project. And, not sure we'll get locals to be able to bond that size of project with so many other projects going on with a lot of the locals. So this will be an interesting one as we go out. Uh, every time we've done an LBC on this, you know, we've had to tweak it up. Uh, major last tweaking was because of the overpass, really the over the railroad, both in the scope of that and just the cost of them. So again, we're getting ready to finally get this thing kicked off. You know, the, again, it just picks it up from where they've already uh, ended it by a Niagara and takes us all the way to 35. Any questions on it? I just think the bidding and construction paid services is what we're looking to get uh, on our agenda and, and push through so that we are ready to bid in May. This is an exciting one that we, as you saw that front picture, that's the um, four street uh, parking garage is completed and Turner Berger is getting closer and closer to uh, allowing us to release. I think the last thing we're waiting for them is to drop all of their scaffolding. I think we're gonna bid before then though, right? We are. But, they're, but they're getting very close to being able to do that. Uh, you remember the scope of work? is the gray again uh, most of their major work and underground work is done garage is done so we can now go ahead and release all of the uh, street work sidewalk work for this project again this is a bidding and construction phase contract that we need to get through the line item was the 272 uh, 349 and the proposal for 272 Again, we're looking for 
advertisement is out there. Right? It is. Yeah. Big date for the ninth, and this will be an exciting project to actually get pushed through. What do you think a completion date on this is? Uh, in the year. So fairly quick project once you get it released. Well, if we hit the gene, we'll probably be first part, first quarter, first quarter of 2014. So we get to we'll have the contract out till probably we probably start construction till mid July, first of July, mid July. Yeah, um, really a huge scope of work as you look at what's going to happen and what's going to do in that whole city center. So again, exciting project to get pushed to the next level. These are projects that are currently ready in our bidding. We finally are released on the east-west gateway. Uh, as you know, both art pieces are completed. Um, next dot, finally, the new the new people at the helm have reviewed the approved documents and reapproved them. So we are now ready to do both the east and the west uh, gateway on this. We got a funding line of the 4.4 advertisement date was April 9th. So really here in the next couple of weeks, we'll be bidding it. Any questions on that? Anything you need from us, David, on this? Just, no. You got a bidding and service contract. You're good to go on We this. are, we have everything. We're good to go. Um, we do have to have textile approved contractors and it is a full mm -hmm. job, so we're, Anxious about how these bids come in, but we feel pretty good about it. Who picked up plans? I need to check. Sorry, I didn't mean to pull you out. <laughs> I never asked that question. So just curious if locals were in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know that some of the, we've had a couple that we, we hit because it does, you have to be text not qualified to, to be able to bid this. Um, we have some locals that are. We had some that just said it didn't fit the schedule. They apologize, but just you know, they wouldn't do it. Emerson did say they were going to bid it, and they're um, text, they're textile text approved. So it's heavy landscape job. It's not heavy civil. So it's you know, it's unique. Project updates. This is your <clears throat> 920 plan McLean pump. Give us an update on this. Where are you? Yeah, we really just brought this to the board because, uh, or to the project committee, because we want to give you an update on this. We're, we're, we're moving through design. This is the one, if you recall, that, that we when we submitted to TCEQ, they uh, came back and said they were going to require ground storage at the site. Uh, that, that's a hindrance to uh, the project that actually works better if we're going off of the airport elevated storage tank with the hydraulics. We submitted that variance to TCEQ and uh, we were open for in that 90 day range plus to get that response back from them. Uh, we have other areas of, of town that have this exact same situation. And, but we have developed a proposal for that ground storage in the event they hold strong to their, their initial review of that, of that project. You know, we're hoping that they come back and allow us to get the variance because it, the system works better without it. Uh, I just wanted to give an update to the project committee that, that this is where we are with this project. Um, we have developed the scope of work in the event we have to do ground storage so that we stay on track with uh, the meta projects. Um, and if TCEQ comes back and holds our ground, we'll be bringing that back to the, to the this committee and to the board. So what you've actually said is that your airport and the combination of the airport and the new uh, elevated storage tank was close enough to that. I um, mean, and just as an update more, like what they're saying is they want ground storage real close to your pump station. Correct. There's no defined criteria in TCEQ about proximity to it. Um, but and we, like I say, we have other areas that are farther away, pump stations to elevated storage tanks that, that feed those pump stations. And the pump selection and the hydraulics work much better if we can go from elevated. Remind us, is the five million dollars? Does it is that enough money to cover that ground storage tank if we need it? It's not. Did we put money in the financing plan? So we're just going to have to do a, a game time call if 
in fact, they require it. You're giving us this update so that very quickly what we will get to is, is um, move on design, getting it in there. And you've done all the work. You would, I mean, yeah, you don't have plans or anything, but you would be able to move very quickly yes. to get that ground storage tank. We'd have to come back with a financing amendment. Do you think that could cost us as much as a million bucks? Maybe a million and a half. So that's just, you know, with this, it's really why it's in here is just for us to know we're good to go on the project. They come back and say, no, nah, we're not going to let you get away without putting the storage tank in. We're going to be ready to go. He's confident that in their design, we don't need it. They're confident that they just want to make us do it. So we'll see what happens when they come back with the review. This is a project that, as you know, we adjusted in our last financing plan. Uh, we added, we added a line to see this we took this section of the uh, transmission line from the water plant over to Lorraine and split it out of the A and B. Uh, as you know, this is the first section of the hiking bike trail. That red line is running completely alongside the uh, railroad that is currently there. So we had already had funding in the financing plan for design. We just have taken, uh, separated this line out so that we can get it into the ground. The hike and bike trail goes over the top of this water line. So uh, since we got grant funding and that process uh, program is moving along, we wanted to get this part released. Uh, Again, it is under design, but we will be moving it forward quickly so that we don't we can move on to the hike and bike trail in that area. So these are the two funding items, 23-24, uh, five million portion. Um, does that five million dollars have the uh, in it? It, 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 does, it not. does not. It's, it's just the dry line. line right now. So we'll have all the line be able to go to the pump station, but Again, just putting the line into the ground will be a dry line. Uh, it does have the bore underneath 31st Street, and I yes. believe the bore under 5th also, Correct. both sides. So right. you would completely be able to complete that project. Again, that's just a, an update we need to get it uh, going so that we get out in front of the hike and bike trail. Uh, again, the, this was a piece of the grant proposal for the um, that hike and bike trail that we hope to go all the way back to uh, as close to Belton as we can and then moving all the way over uh, up so you can see that the phase one is that section between 31st Street and 5th. Again a little bit more of a blow up you can see the squares and dots those are connections to the community inside there. If you've been out there, there's a current project. This is pretty much a semi-meaningless picture. If you get out there right now, you can tell right above uh, the left of that truck is the rail section of the railroad. If you go out there right now, this whole picture is is um, as a bridge. I tried to get David to get a picture, but he got snagged off of the site just so you could really see that this end, this is by Fifth Street. So the bridge connection to the hike and bike trail is already complete right now. A pretty much a major drainage uh, program there that we had a bottleneck on the creek there. So they've got that all cleaned up. If, if you get a chance to go out there, I mean, really a beautiful bit, uh, bridge structure uh, it's in. So that portion of the project hike and bike is ready to be connected into. Any questions on that section? <laughs> Again, downtown lighting, the purple are where we are good to go as far as having easement sign for the lights. Uh, hit a wall on most of the yellow squares of uh, individuals that just aren't interested in uh, talking about it. Who's land in Casper? Rick Sun. Hmm? Rick Sun. Oh, it works for you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I just got an email. Well, Brenda had asked me. She had said that really we're at a point to where the yellow well, we hit the wall, and she just wanted us as an update to know that we would probably be moving on the purple. I know just about every one of those people in the yellow square. So I've reached out to two of them. One was um, I don't want to say his name, but 
a big portion of that yellow that's uh, in the middle there is, uh, I think, will get released. I think I can get about three of these buttoned up. It's just be people that just want to be people. And so in talking to them, a, a huge headway. Um, so thank you. Louis, you know, um, Brian's calling me. He wants to get it done. I've reached out to quite a few of these people, and they just don't really understand the project or just are being people. So anyway, we're going to make one more run at it and see how many of these we can get. A couple of these are individuals. You, They wake up in the morning and say they don't want to do things. I'm not supposed to say that, but others are just, I think, don't understand the project. Is the yellow, like, is textile yellow or that one? Above? Yeah, that's all textile. That, I just can't tell the colors. I can tell the two colors there. You're, you're, you're colorblind? Well, just the, most of those up there are good. It's going to be hard. You're colorblind, man. You're just in big trouble. The textiles are the one that the color the color that's textile is the one that we don't have signed agreements yet. Yeah, yeah. So that's that Louis, all of Louis. He's got Louis, all the ones on Main Street down below. He's got one over on Second Street. I really think that Louis and Ryan will will go for it. I've been working hand in hand with Texel, uh, Tony. I mean, he's a good guy. I'm sure he's just concerned about selling his property and adding an easement on top of it. I, I, I really think we can get really close with Texel. Yeah, and then he's, get he's that and that's Tony. I mean, that is mm -hmm. his MO too. I think we can get that done. So I think we can get a couple of these important ones. We can get over the hurdle. Especially when they know that you know this is the chance. After this, we're pretty going pretty much going to move on. So we're just giving that one college try to move through on this. They, you know, that's a lot of people to get to say that they will take care of you know allowing us put the lights up. So anyway, just that's an update. Yeah, one um, on with Ryan. I was talking with Landon yesterday, and I think right now they're wanting to know whether they can proceed without an easement. You know, which makes it difficult long term. Um, so we're working through that right now and hoping because I know he's got five yeah, separate parts. I just think you tell him we need to have an easement. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, Ryan's a good kid. He's in charge of all their properties now. So exercising his intelligence. So a good dude. I mean, I really think we can move on, on some of these. We just meet with them personally and get them over the hump. So that's just an update. It's a long-term project we've been working on. It seems like forever. So they still, it's a good project worth uh, working on. Uh, Avenue A corridor is a project that we added uh, with David. The, the important section of that is that section that's over by uh, uh, to the left, you know, close to Third Street. Now we really need to do it, but. As you guys know, almost everybody in the downtown is ready for their sidewalk and street to be rebuilt. And a number of people, David and Brian and myself, it, probably you too, hit up from is it's just incredible. And you know, so every time they go build a street section, the next person says, Why can't we do ours? As you know, Main Street's been done. Yeah, Main is done. And so we're just trying to get from A over to uh, 4th Street. This is a section that uh, is going to become important for the extra co building, just important for both the motor bank and that. So David has, has got the uh, uh, landscaping on um, the whole plan is completed. Um, yes, sir. When do you think you're going to go south on those downtown improvements? Yeah, that's why I just South said that, that everybody in town wants their section done. And I had a meeting with someone yeah, this last week about it. Ryan's whole deal was the same thing. He's got some things going on on two of his pieces of property. You know, Bo is calling us on a, you know, on a quarterly basis. He's doing his restaurants. If you look at what he's got on 4th Street, it's done. <laughs> you talk to the people in front of the Great Lake of Chiefs, they've been complaining for years about that. And, and we need to go south. And, and I mean, so you take a section from third to main or from main to second. One of those sections is a million 750. He says a million five, you know, 
I've gone to a million seven fifty, and I'm not so sure you shouldn't use two million for every one of these sections. So you got one, two, three, four, five sections, ten million dollars for this it has nothing to do with the ones to the south. But, you know, I was sitting at lot to lot the other day, counting them up. And so you got a fifty million dollar project, Tim. Which one gets to be chosen? And the zone is, as you know, felt like it's pretty important to move. And I'm talking for you guys, not for myself. And we've all talked about this. Is at what point do you have to? move your eye over to other targets and so this one is driven by a huge amount of help from extraco on that section by them because they were you can see that the um garage is there you can tell that he's um there's a the sale of extraco building is there they've got some issues in between Texel and and the bank and so this is this is the um logical next move uh jim after that we just had added this to our project demo so do we have construction dollars we do not so we're mainly just moving ourselves into the design uh, phase of this with no money left in 24 25 26 yeah, so you got 27 and 28 out there that your increment uh, jumps up considerable. Yes, yeah. good because I told him five years. Yeah, <laughs> you wanted us. You wanted an answer, but we. This is this. We only designing this, and do not have construction dollars on it. So we're really, you know, I would say that this will get done in five years. So I would say that five years would be a start, which you would. This is from my chair. Um, Again, you know, when you guys were, were all updated, we talked about this quite a bit. There are so many other unfunded downtown projects on the radar screen that don't have a slide. If they don't have a slide, that means they're not on our radar screen, which means we haven't done any design work, which means they haven't been vetted and we haven't even begun the process to get in the financing plan. So probably what you're talking about is in that category, which would be we're not even starting up in five years. The process of trying to get it released in five years. I say ten. Okay. I'm. I don't know. You know. You know. We have done really good, as you guys know, in pushing um, pushing projects when dollars are available. But you know, it, it, every one of these comes with another element, which is. Um, we'll see if I can get to it. Well, we don't have it. We're gonna talk. I should have put it right after that, the, the power. Oh, you know, I always do that because it's always nice to have the same discussion. Uh, in here, I got a slide that talks about the um, the, the power for Extraco. And it, it, you know, <coughs> it is such a moving target. Anybody who has any work with Encore, it's just an incredible uh, mystery, right? It's it, it fast. And so we're working on that power for Extraco right now. And so in these numbers, when we're at 1.7, one of the things that has really adjusted our numbers on, on some of these street projects is, as you know, we were doing the one for the garage and we had to take out a million two portion of Encore's underground. So when we rebuild these streets, it's also the time that you're taking that power from up above, getting rid of those H frames, dropping them down. When you drop them down underground and every single building is connected right now, their power is running up to the H frame over when we put the go underground, then everybody's got a switch. So every building has got a switch. Are we paying for every switch in every building to go from the H frame down into the underground when we do that? Which is just a and then, you know, for example, the new Bird Creek. Yeah. We had to pay for that because it was a, a new service, new service. But if it's an existing service, then then we have to pay to present. It's a there's a transition from overhead to that underground as as far as those connections. And Different so kind of system. It's existing and and it's not a new service. Then we pay. And, and we ran into some issues to where no electrician wants to just go on the outside of a building, take the power that's going up to the H and down underground, switch to a different kind of system, without having the buildings reinspected. And so if you think about it, your, your inspectors are like, well, and the contractors that we're trying to get to do that switch are like, yeah, you know, I'm not really interested in blowing this uh, building out of the ground, I'm being John's turn, but you don't know 
what's inside on some of these, you know, when you look at these in the old buildings. So when we're talking about, hey, let's just do this one little Main Street to second, you know, and go up second street, what happens with the power going underground, then you start getting into, uh, you, you know, your electronics, your high speed, and it's the process. 1.7 sometimes doesn't cover the 1.7 of power. I remember you sitting there about seven years ago when we started the master planning for the electric, and I said that that in itself was a $20 million. I don't know if you guys remember this. So you, you got two things going on. The incredible expense it takes for us to figure out how to get power, and you rebuilding downtown. Tim, so I mean, really, this is just not designed. We don't have construction dollars. So this is probably one, two, three, four, five million dollar project. Uh, the whole thing? Because Main Street stuff. So <clears throat> third, third domain is just our improvements are 2.6. And then we, which you're going to get to with the Encore thing, that they're still messing with that DSA and that design. But we estimated that to go to 3.5. <laughs> With Encore, what number? Uh, again. 3.25. So we're 2.6 to go from oh, Third okay. Street to Main. Not just the power, you're talking about yeah. combined. Yeah, numbers. everything so that's all what, together. So that's why I've been trying to uh, tell the project group and everyone inside this room when we say that it's, you know, 1.7 piece for that, uh, for each block section, that does not include the total mess it takes for the power, which can end up being anywhere for doubling it. So I think we're very, I don't know how you pick winners and losers. And I've said that, you know, we're, we've been asking for guidance from staff. Uh, we're doing, you know, you know, there was negotiations on the uh, decision for extra code to work with us on that parking garage, which is why we, and that's your first street parking garage, which is why we've said we need to help them. There's been a sale on the extra code building. But you go to the very next block, uh, Main Street, the second, and you got the Great Lake of Chiefs sitting there, and they have been downtown for 15 years. Why did they have to wait? And then you've had Jack come in here. You got Ryan asking about his buildings, and you got whoever you're meeting with saying, well, Why are we picking this and we're not doing the whole downtown? Well, it's $50 million. We don't have $50 million. And, and we try to do the best job of, of, Picking the right ones based on deals that have been cut by the city and us. It's, I mean, it really is an issue. You guys downtown, we got um, quite a few sections we need to complete. When you're done, you will have beat real, you know, you would have finished redoing downtown. This is, uh, you know, really you got Third Street. We're going over, you know, over to the overpass to get our hike and bike trail. There's a lot of projects need to get done, including this one, as you. No, the Veterans Memorial Boulevard. We got funding in our our funding plan of ten million dollars to do the scope of work that is this. That ten million dollars is the dollar that we used probably twelve years ago as our beginning dollars that we stole over the years because we really couldn't get the thing released. Went out to um, Carter to get this $18 million funded, and they have worked with city and Brent's done all kinds of pulling a rabbit's out of a hat and trading to get ourselves $10 million. So we got $10 million that will not cover this project. David is currently working with, with engineering and, and going. The, one of the main keys is, is that all the water that is coming from the VA crosses over, goes through Temple College, then goes through the apartments, literally the apartments over at the bridge. I believe it's the bridge. Actually, a whole bottom floor water goes in one door, heads out the other one. You know, goes through the Strasburger track. That that drainage basin, which then goes all the way down to, uh, you know, through town. We need to really do that drainage before we release this project. Uh, where are you on designs on that? Do you have numbers on this thing? You do not. This is just an update. Yeah, you do have them. This is currently what we have in our. So we have a design in progress. We, we got to discuss this drainage. Drainage. Uh, we don't. You haven't got numbers. You got numbers yet? On drainage. The whole project. And we put a number to this. I know David Olson and I were talking about this. And ready. We're all ready. We got to adjust this line. There's you guys. The scope of work on this. We are getting our arms around. Correct. 
and we we have we have run numbers. Um, if the you know, discussion was let's look and see what happens if we try to capture twenty five year storm event and convey the hundred <coughs> with the the current scope work. In other words, if you if you upgraded Veterans Memorial to the ten million dollar event, but you didn't. $10 million ten, ten million dollars, which is less than a ten year storm. Okay. And you conveyed that to the Temple College channel and then across Fifth Street on down. At Fifth Street with the 25 year, you overtop that road by almost eight inches. And the hundred year, 14 inches. Yeah. And so and so we've looked at all the way to the loop with those improvements because we we had looked at that previously. Back when we did a $16 million, when I know there was a call for a $16 million uh, grant. So we, there's going to be a caveat with this. We think you're pushing $20 million, mm -hmm. but, but <clears throat> caveat is the, um, with the reversal of wetlands and environmental, yeah. that could get uglier. Yes, we have a, we just began the process of getting our arms around this number. The drainage, you're, you're capturing, so you're saying that you're detaining. I mean, like right now, if you build this Veterans Boulevard and we design it to the 25 year, and that's what you said, then capture the 100, or you're pushing the 100 and capture capturing. Capturing, you know, so your inlets. Yeah, and yeah, your storm yeah. sewer system, your underground system 25. is capturing the 25 and conveying that. Your cross drainage, so your culverts, your channels to Friars Creek would convey the 100. So if we finish this project, did it to that design standard only under the loop and then just it out, does that cause additional problems downstream? Right now, I mean, do you got to go all the way downstream? No. That's what you know. We can do that. We can just do that little piece. We're not capturing any wetlands in that section, are we? It's just, I mean, there are wetlands all through there, especially under the current criteria, but it's only where you're doing improvements. Yeah. So that's the Strasburger track. Strasburger track. And what we would, what you would want to do to Friars Creek to get to the loop, because we are, those apartments are flooding as well. So having said all of that, you know, one of the things that, this is what is on our financing plan. I've been trying to squeak out a number from him. You can tell I still don't have this number. We don't have a number. But if you were to, you know, we're just discussing this project there. What, what do you think that is? What do you mean? Yeah, that's what I thought you said. <laughs> David, is there, when we redo the Veterans Memorial project, are we creating a new problem that doesn't exist today, or are we? Is that does that problem the overtopping and and all does that exist today, and we're not making it any worse, or are we creating that problem with the addition of the roadway? So, so today, if if we get the storm events that are above the really at the ten year and above, uh -huh. then Veterans Memorial is taking the brunt. So it's okay. basically acting like detention mm -hmm. until you release it to uh, down to the Temple College Channel, underneath Fifth Street, Strasburger property to to, to Friars. Okay. Have you looked if, at that whole model? He did. Have you looked? I haven't. At that? I haven't you should seen the whole model. Should send him that model. So if we were to capture the twenty-five and then let that yeah, convey, you know, releasing it quicker. Right, right. You're you're, you're you're moving that down all the way through. Now the loops, the culverts at the loop, the textile put in, they're you know through there, they're they handle that. And then we looked at downstream and, and within the hundred year floodplain, what that does. So, but that's that's what you do. You basically say, okay, Veterans Memorial is now good to go. Right. But, but you're pushing that downstream. As it exists today, which is why we tried to tell Jonas and Right. Yeah. Carter, yeah. And we're just taking that inundation and putting it over on some other Correct, street, right, yeah. Know. We're handling VAs. Yeah, water and they don't handle their own water, which is what we constantly tried to be nice to our congressmen and say, look at it's you know, it's your it's VA hospital. I mean the, the big portion. So in other words, that ten million dollars pretty much handles the drainage portion of this project. 
We've also talked, um, and I'm going to say we very generously <laughs> point at our engineering team about maybe some middle ground. Um, you know, and John, I mentioned this to you when we met last week or week before last, is that I don't feel good about building a road under the 25 year storm um, yeah. because that's that is what we that is our, our baseline yeah. standard. Yeah. But is there something between the 20 million dollars and the 10 million dollars that we could break the, the project apart so you don't you don't fix the whole thing, but could we build the road to the 25 year uh, storm and do some portion of the drainage now and then plan to follow up in the future with the, the bigger project. So I think, and I think there are some options that that's we why we're can explore in between. And we're, we're definitely now working, you know, having him begin the process of, of giving us those options, working with your staff and the, you know, there's no number to plug in there because we've got to come up with whatever option it is and finding middle ground and figuring out what we can do to actually move this project forward. So that's what we're doing. I'm just giving you guys an update on it. That we really picked up the drainage. We were going to, not to dwell on this, but when we were looking at our $10 million and then $18 million project, we there was a point where we were going to build veterans and not deal with the drainage situation at all. It was mid mid project that we decided, well, the smart thing would be to pick up the drainage and then that it is sort of spun out. You were, and, they're gonna improve it from what it is today, yeah. but you weren't gonna get to a 25 year capture and a hundred year advance. Um, is, do we wanna look at something, you know, in between? Do we wanna say, okay, do we capture the 10 and, and see what that conveyance looks like for a 25 or 50 and then what does 100 look like you know just what happens so that's going to happen outside of this project meeting we just wanted to get the update there are those who have said well you got the funding why aren't you moving and so you know brandon and i've talked and david and i've talked and i know everybody's talking and what we're going to do is come the next time we really bring this back we hope to have worked through all of some options and come to the project group with the option or two that we're going to do it's more of an update probably wouldn't go into this kind of a detail in the full board meeting it's just tell everybody we're working on drainage <laughs> that's what we're doing and it's a it's a big that is one of the drainage uh, that we haven't touched in our community. You, you know, you think the hog pen, we've talked about that hog pen's almost done, the Pebble Creek's almost done, right? I mean, we're all the way down with the outer loop. You know, you almost got two of your major drainage areas taken care of. This is one that's old, you know, old temple. That's what's so tough, like in downtown when you're building downtown. That's when you already have existing subdivisions, existing houses, existing things, trying to push this water and fix it is a little bit exciting new projects that we're looking at one project that um Brent and i have talked about that with the expansion and what's going on in the industrial park we could use a um, facility up there to handle you know lawn maintenance maintenance uh, just got a ton of streets up there a ton of infrastructure and it's continuing to grow so she was wondering if we could take a look find a good location to to um, work with uh, public works to have a, a satellite uh, location in the industrial park. Uh, we've looked at these three sites. We really just wanted to tell you we're beginning the process of looking at the properties we have that we own that we could easily get to and, and um, put in a facility. Uh, just as a quick picture, you know, what, what is a facility? What are you talking about? You know, something similar to what we have over at the crossroads where you do have, uh, you know, this was real quick, David, do this at me. Well, so, so you're talking about something similar to uh, what you got at the crossroads. I said, well, that's a really good, uh, you, you know, example. If you're looking at, I mean, you can't really see it here, but if you look here at the top of uh, left corner, you got, you know, four concrete uh, storage bins for material, you know, next to that, if you go out there, you got two row locks in behind, you got three more um, trash, you've got an ability to park, uh, you got it fenced in, 
uh, you got a facility that really that they can use as a satellite maintenance facility. Uh, this was just for a purpose of giving you an idea of what are you looking at trying to build. We'll be working with uh, Don Bond, uh, David Olson to really determine what is the need up there and then make sure we have a location for it. You know, Morris Mill's got a really good site right next to that uh, major power source right there that you could put a nice facility in. You know, they got the nice fence around that. We could do a nice, you know, uh, fence similar to them and do it. Uh, the other sites is over there by Boozy. And, and then uh, a future site you could do is the one that's up on uh, site, what, site 64, I guess is what you call that. And still looking at others, um, funding wise, and, and you can give me a funding number. I did. I did. We did go back. What, one of the things I was going to ask Melissa if it was okay, it looked like in the maintenance fund, you know, up there we've got that makeup number. I can't remember what it was. It's 200, 200, 200, 200. And, you, and we uh, captured it at 300 right now. So that we don't just for planning purposes and getting this thing kicked off so that we could get started. If he could push us a contract, which isn't going to be a huge contract to actually work with them, you know, do a design on that. If we could use some of that 300, if, you know, if the if final course would be okay with that, and we could still come back and, and, and then have a financing amendment to actually get what it is once we get to it. That, that's rail maintenance and street maintenance yeah I think and i think there's yeah. two line items so we were just curious if that was okay we needed a you know financing amendment we could get us that we could push the contract through we could use some of the money out of that deal and then we'll we'll come back and do it so that's what he's going to do this is if everybody is okay i think it's important I think i'm on a limit here again you know just what i hear you know over time you guys we're, we're adding a lot of uh, street sections to our community that take maintenance, this takes maintenance, which is why it's got a maintenance part and it's got, you know, contract. When you're up north, you take this loop from uh, uh, airport, you know, 37 or airport all the way up to I 35. All of that's got, you know, quite a bit of uh, landscaping. We got maintenance up there. And as you know, we capture a, a conserval, conserval most of the tax dollars up there. So it's really our responsibility to help get a a deal. So that is a new project that hasn't it just hit the radar screen, just making sure everybody is okay first with us uh, pursuing that, uh, you know, getting a uh, design, getting it um, funded and uh, built here in the next couple of years so that we have a facility up there. Everybody good with that? This is just a target. Uh, I don't know, if, uh, David, if that's what you all are looking at, but it, it really gave me a really good target as to, well, this is sort of what we're looking at and we can use that. And if that works, that's where we're gonna head. That's a bunch of words. This um, also is a, something we've got to get taken care of. Uh, this, was, this was one of Encore's designs that we've all were working towards. Uh, yesterday afternoon, Encore called David and said, hey, you know about that nice little drawing that you guys are going to present to the your, uh, your zone meeting? Yeah, that ain't what we're going to do, um, which is really pretty common with um, Encore. Encore has a daily revolving door for project managers. So they give you one and they give you a design, they give you a number, and then you go to do it and they start over again. We're starting over again, it's my understanding. I think you'll be able to get it. But I am telling you that, that this, getting this power done is, is paramount to extra code, getting their bank done in, in their, in extra codes deal, they've got to get out of their current bank so that they can start that process. So we really need to be working with extra code with third to main street section of road we're going to be tearing all that up, getting them eight frames out of there, getting this switch put in, getting new transformers taken care of what you're here. But this design's not it. Did they say they have a new one for you? Or they're just working on it? They're, they're huddling back up. I think they've got one. It's, it's, it's just close. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty close. We're, we're not going, we're, we're staying farther north and not coming down from Avenue B. Or extra code specifically. Yeah. So this is a pretty design, but next time we meet, we'll have a new one, which is fairly common. I mean, not to get on, it's just 
it's just a revolving door there. That's your, your problem. It's just when they're going new people, new people, new people. We we've got to really work at trying to get this done for Extraco. Are they working with you, Extraco? You? I mean, do we do I need to worry? Sure it's there's the you on, on Extraco is is calling on core consistently. Mm -hmm. And so they're they Is know the pressure. Extra code or their extra code's, um, engineer and architect. Uh, extra code uh, from Waco. Okay, yeah, yeah, we are the big dude. dude. Yeah, yeah, the big yeah. guy. Yeah, it looks like he's having the same luck we are. <laughs> David, do you have an estimated cost? So the original DSA that they sent us that's no longer valid was a little under 156,000. Uh, that was that number. So we had uh, we had plugged in that eight and third. Our improvements were 2.6, and we had another 600,000 for the extra coast stuff. And that was just really a. Didn't you like those two numbers? Yeah. 100, 600. I'm always at the same point. Can you give me one of the two? For our improvements, extra it's, coast was 600,000. You're making a whole underground. You're making it up till you get a design. I mean, it's just we're you're just making up numbers. And it's been a real. I mean, it it is across the board. I hate to say that any it's a it's an issue. I mean, we got a major project out west, and we get fourteen buildings, um, you know, fifty million dollars worth of projects. We want to look at it holistically. Say, can you design the whole thing? Every one of these buildings is under design. I mean, you got a apartment complex. You got you know, three buildings that are actually permitted and ready to go, and they look at them individually. And we're saying, but you have a building right next door. Yeah, how about they know do we need a switch ball? They they can't do it. They won't look at it anything holistically. So it's a you know, we've got that master plan for the electrical in downtown that we paid so that we understand what we've got. You go up to do a project like this, they just can't pull the trigger. It's I know you've got that same thing, don't you, Steve? I mean it's it's, it's just, it's just it's okay they're, they're you know they're you, you're getting you don't want to call them kids but you know every designer's you know, 26 year old right out of school who they give it to he sends it up north they send it back and it's just like this circle i don't know how you fix it we can't i can't fix the ours so i don't know how you're fixing it and that's really those those are your major projects that we have we haven't Really, you know, you can go one step further, which is the, to, for us, that's one of the things I haven't, our group hasn't shown is should we take another look, how much further out do we want to go? You know, to Tim's question, when can we, what streets in downtown are you at? Where are we at? We haven't much past these particular projects. I think getting these and our water projects, getting our arms around it, getting, you, you got to, you take every one of these projects, every one of them, we got a ten million dollar budget for a twenty million dollar project. I mean, I think we need to take projects that we've been working on really hard right now. See what happens on that outer loop. We got thirty four. We started at twenty six, went to twenty nine. We're at thirty four. It's big going to come in at thirty seven. You know, I mean that that is, that's why I have told our group every time we meet that there is a point where you should touch the brakes a little bit and. Get these major yeah. projects that are tied to major projects. Bid started, know our numbers, know where we're heading, and then push. We've got other projects queued up. I mean, like what we just showed you on that Avenue A, that's queued up. We've got some design, but we're, we don't have um, construction dollars. If you take the construction dollars for the projects that we're queuing up and push them out five years, you've absorbed the dollars. So when you're telling somebody five years, yeah. in five years we're gonna look at it. That means that's where we are as a as a zone. I think most important things uh, we exit, and then unless we are directed differently, um, you know, our water sewer, you you can have all the infrastructure you want in the world, and if you can't supply water and and wastewater services, you don't need streets and land and all that. So our focus right now is completing the projects that. We have shown you, make sure that the bid started, make sure that we've got arms around change orders. Go ahead and get your arms around the infrastructure now for water and sewer in those areas for where we've already bought land. Um, take a look at the real numbers of that and see where that sits in our financing plan, which is now starting to push past 27, 26, 27, 28. 
before we get too far out in front of ourselves. And so if there are any projects the city would want us to look at, you got Third Street, construction hours on Third Street, hiking and bike trail, probably not selling us yet. You know, it's so many projects we can call us. I think we do. I think you have that one. Well, um, community market. Yeah, you those are two, two projects for put, put both those in this for me and for the board because those are two projects that are funded so I can get an update. Third Street um, funded in 25. So, you, you know, so that's uh, Third Street is your hike and bike, you know, that that's heading over up getting us headed north in those projects, a little bit of creep, um, you know, creep, important word. We love the word creep, but, you know, we creep over to the triangle. I know you've had an update, Aaron, uh, recently met with um, city staff on three projects that are currently on our radar screen. One is yeah. Third Street, there's no triangle there. We should, you know, really try to add a great drawing. I think they did a really good job on it. We don't own that property. So every project we have, if we want to do them right, which is Bryn, when she meets with uh, Brian and us and talks about our projects, I'm Veterans Boulevard, you got $10 million on a $20 million project. Our dis decision-making process is let's do it right. Therefore, that's why we got to, I think that it's time for us to do that project. So, you know, we got a $10 million project probably going to cost us 15 I'm making that number up. But there's a number there, but if you take Third Street, we got some funding. We're ready to go. We got a design, a little bit of creep, a little piece of triangle that we're going to do this, do it right. We probably need to touch that. You got the garden of the community center, great design. Probably pull the string a little bit on the design, push the envelope as far as making it first quality. So, yeah, you, know, you got your work around uh, the Lorraine Drive. Uh, Got some work. We're moving, you know, just west. Uh, that's important. And so you, you can take some of these projects we're looking at, you know, you got to be queued up, you know, some of the loop style, some of that. You know, you're out 30 years on this stuff. So, you know, it's a big stuff. You, to you all, you, you get you get the phone calls to when we're out there looking at what we'll be doing in 30 years that, you know, we're lucky if we get to 30 years doing some of these projects. You downtown, you're lucky if we can get to 10 years. We, we look at stuff and and everybody gets to get on and we're all talking about projects 10 years, 10 or 15 years now, but if you don't get them started and take a look at them, they never hit the radar screen. So that's again my show box on that. There's a lot of projects that we have queued up that we'd be happy if we can we'll all be being pushed around in a wheelchair by the time they hit the actual ground. Still, excellent point. We need to get them done. The projects that we have on the board. This is a great summary. We even have Old Power Road up there, and part of the you know, I mean, there are other projects to look yeah. at. So we, we have a full plate, right? Yeah, the Old Power. You know, and that's I think we're pretty close. Uh, we're funded on water sewer, Melissa, right? And you know what? Watch with that, with that Old Power and that uh, LEO one extension on there. I think we we're funded on that, aren't we? Yeah. It's worth getting into here as an update where you stop, which, which, you know, you know that's an hour. The road's we, not funded. You what? The road is funded. It's amazing when you really, you know, it's, it's, um, I wanted to really focus on the ones that we're at. Right there is what, I mean, we're digesting right now as a group. I mean, about those projects, that's what I had David get to so that all of you guys know okay what are we doing right now that's what we're doing right now you can then take what are we doing right now in the next year and a half yeah. that you know half funded half not funded you know what are we doing in three years you know that's some of these projects that we're just trying to bet and get a good feel for doing this meeting as a group to say, are we missing anything? You know, Brad, is there anything, you know, here's our presentation and you say, hey, where's this project? Uh, you know, you, you've you asked, you got people calling you. Know, I would tell you, you know, I don't mean to keep going to that, but when people are calling downtown, it's, you're out of money. 
you know, unless your budget and you know on, on more of a general fund, we're not we're not touching it. We haven't funded what we got drawn. So it's a long time. I you know was, we should get our arms around Gary on another joint meeting, which is to push out those six or so projects that we are working on that are definitely going to need additional funding to see because the ones that aren't totally funded are just we're working on that means if they're not totally funded or not we don't have the money right i mean you got 10 million sitting there <laughs> i would say on that let's go back to this veterans i would think that we should I don't know if we can do this, but I think you'd fund everything on that drainage and just get it started. Can you classify the 10 that we have and still be drainage because it's part of the project? Go ahead and get all that drainage um, as almost a separate project. Difficult because of what you're putting, what you're capturing, right? You could do some of your downs. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're going to go that route, you really you got to start the loop and work yourself back because you don't want to you don't want to yeah. capture release flood, you know. So you're starting the downstream end where you know you're good and then work back. See, what you got to do is say, okay, it, it, you can figure it out, but it's, it's going to be. What do you do that? that you, you know, that's one of the options that we can end up on there, which is to, you know, to use the money that we have, begin the process of starting at the bottom end of this portion that we're going to do, get it all the way up, and then, then all you do is dropping in your inlets and, and storm and releasing it because it's already done. That, that's a considerable project and just, you know, how you go through that apartment complex. I'm still trying to figure that out. I mean, what, what do they allow you to do? Another great job for Kathy is to go figure out, you know, you got, they got it both right through the middle of an apartment complex. So you can't fix it until you fix that. Right. Yeah. And the, and the, the fun part of that's going to be really from the loop up to the Strasburg property with priors yeah. with, the, with the current environmental laws that has to be done before we can go and release right that's that's the sequence you should do it in otherwise you're flooding yeah i would think that that's probably what we should be focusing you on which is 100 percent you and, and public works getting <laughs> that done. i mean it, it, it could be interesting on how long we all know how long it takes to navigate those decisions we there's a lot of people in the room sorry but but you know it's we don't do this a, a, enough you know it's what these guys are doing every day in their offices so we're just giving you an update on every little project has some little thing that's going to cost us a little bit more money if we do it right one of the things that the council and city staff and the zone board has done is Let's do it right. So every time you look at a project that doing it right, it costs you a little bit more. Especially when you got the hurdles we got. I'm filling the air in the conversation. I can blow on it. I can go on until noon if you want. But I mean, is there anything anybody wants to talk about on any of these projects? And Melissa, did you say we didn't have construction for all time? Is that not line 47? It's in 24. 24, that's right. Thank you. Okay. Do we have somebody? Yes, sir. 3.9 and 24. World Tower. Yes, sir. A lot of numbers, a lot of projects, a lot of great things going on. I think we're moving a bunch of great projects forward. We get over this next little group it's a lot to manage for public works i mean you got projects going on in every quadrant of the city first time since i've lived here you can't i mean you're talking about every quadrant of the city you got three schools being built in the district i mean that's you know it's been a long time since we had one school built more than three you know that takes facilities takes infrastructure downtown exploding Industrial park closing, new one out in the west. Got water projects in both. You know, really think about it. There isn't anything that isn't untouched. So, guys, down front. I always tell people I moved here and it was forty-five thousand people. Were ninety hit and hundred, right? So in twenty years, you, 
can't imagine we can double with 200,000 people. I mean, everybody gets mad because they're, they're coming. I know Extraco, you know, we had our deal yesterday to, uh, with uh, that Fed chairman from the, the Dallas Fed. And she's telling you, man, you're, you know, state of Texas is just killing it. And there's nothing that's going to stop it. It's not us. The largest in migration of any state um, in this accelerating. I mean, people are just flooding to this state. It ain't our fault. You either get your arms around it and plan for it and prepare for it, or it just runs you over. So I think we're doing good. I, you guys are doing good, but it's we're going to be two hundred thousand in twenty years. That's a bunch of people. I mean, you guys driven any road that we are right now? You take Airport Road trying to get here. I mean, you sit at that light at that Sepco. You just <laughs> both directions all the way. Back both directions, it's 2305. You can't get these loops opened up quick enough. You know, that outer loop, you the west, if you can't get it opened up soon enough, as you know, everybody's kicking themselves into two roads. They ain't got enough capacity. John and Adrian's uh, at the PVC um, retreat, retreat yesterday. And correct me if I'm wrong, Adrian, but the first speaker. Did he say that Texas created 60% of all jobs that were created in the nation last year was created in Texas? 60%. 20% would seem like an exorbitant number. No, right? The states, it's, it's, we're exploding. The state's exploding. I mean, the, it is the first, well, the, the new metroplex or whatever you call it, that triangle. They've all talked about it. We're in the heart of the triangle now, is what they said. You know, you looked at their heat map, I mean, which is just incredible. You know, you got to go down Georgetown, you can see they're building nine, 10, 20 million square foot warehouses. They don't have anybody to work in them. The whole heat map is right here. I couldn't figure out what was east of us. Is it Cameron? It must have been Cameron. I didn't, that could, didn't look like it was Rockdale, Cameron. Rockdale's further south. I couldn't figure out what that heat map was. You know, that I, 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 I got it. Everybody, I mean, if you look at that, they've already leased a million square foot. They would build three more of these if we had places for them. I mean, it, it's going to happen. I mean, that's this ain't a zone project. Anybody looked at that, you know, the warehouses that they're building out there, they've already sold their million square foot when they're going to build the other two, and they want 30 acres somewhere. 30 acres takes a, a loop, takes water, takes sewer. We have all the jobs nobody else does. You go down, you know, Georgetown, this is your retreat. But we all know that for people who weren't there. I mean, this thing ain't gonna stop. I mean, it's, it's, you know, they're, the big boys are here. It used to be just a bunch of locals here. You know, I couldn't build a million square foot warehouse if I could. I mean, I could, but then what are those? What is that project? Dollar wise, 20 million? How much? 90 million dollars. I mean, we used to think a little teeny ninety million dollar project in our industrial park was good. And now, you know, unless you get a billion dollars, you can keep bringing a billion dollar plants. But it's a, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> it, it is, a, you know, that's what we've got to try to determine. You, you know, you got two sets of services that you have to do. We concentrated our last master plan on quality plants. We're trying to make sure that. You know, things around our schools were okay. You worked very hard with your school. You know, both school systems are good. You got two more school systems that are going to be feeling the same thing. Both Troy and Little River Academy are in the city of Temple. You're going to have, you know, you're going to have an additional two schools that are just going to explode. And the only place that they can build will be in the city of Temple. So Troy is your next one. You know, everything, you know, we've completely encircled Troy. We've completely encircled Little River Academy. That's the only place we can go build houses. It's the only place you're going to see actual not just houses, but our commercial is going to go to those um, in our city in their school system. So it's a, I think, exciting times that are we have to manage. There, there. Like I keep going back to the uh, uh, everybody that is calling me, everybody is calling us, everybody that is coming into our town is not. They don't live here now. That's the first time I've been here, that, and they're, they're buying up our land, and we're having to put in our infrastructure to try to keep in front of them. And so, John, to that point, and another staggering stat, we as a state 
and a fallen number here. Here we as a state had 400,000 more people that entered Texas in the workforce age group between 18 and 55 than the second I say. See. So 400,000 400, more people, it's graduations in the 18 years old or, or that age group and then migration into the state. Jobs, they're coming here for that same staff, you know, that, that the jobs are here. You've got, uh, you, you've heard this from Austin, her numbers are always year over year. You know, uh, accountants and bean counters, they're, they, you know, you, you guys that all look with shiny shoes and that, they have, you know, they, the numbers are, are one over another. So you have a six, well, you, you know, you got 6% growth in the next year at four. Well, it doesn't mean it's, it just means it's slowed. You can't, we couldn't absorb the six. You know, Austin couldn't handle that 6% growth. They were at, a hundred and they needed a hundred and twenty housing units, and they put down forty thousand. They needed a hundred and twenty housing units, and they put down forty. You know, so the Fed they looked at that and said, "That's great." You know, Austin's slowing. They needed that because they still have eighty thousand units that they're needing, and they were the number one overpriced market in the United States. And so it's adjusted down, which is good, good but it, it's going to last a year. It's interesting. He's brought, I mean, it's incredible the number of high quality uh, speakers that we now have in Temple. The That Fed is considered, I mean, almost Washington gets most of their information from the Dallas Fed. I mean, that the Dallas Fed is actually just because of what's happening here, don't you think, probably the number one? Yeah, the one dissenting conversation on a, a recent rate hike, right? So, and they listened to her. They still did it, yeah. but she definitely had a voice of the people. Yeah, she was really tiptoed around that answer. You know, she had said with the market, she didn't. She would not give her opinion, which she cannot, because we'd all run out and say that's what she said. She'd get in trouble. So it will be interesting. You know, the elephant in the room is just wages. There, you know, I, I just don't get it. There's nobody in Texas going to let anybody go. I mean, you can't let your staff go. So. Here you are, every dynamic, every single number is okay. Only thing driving inflation is jobs. And she said, oh, we got to have a job loss. Who's going to let somebody go? I mean, I just don't get that. It's, it is uh, interesting times for us to get out in front. We keep saying the same thing, Brent. I bring full circle back to you. Is there anything we're missing that the city said? I mean, you know, all of us are working hard, you're working hard, everybody's good, but I'm like, missing is our group missing anything that you need from us. If you'll give me an opportunity to digest that and um, provide anything that we see is needing to be brought to the table, um, we'll, we'll follow up. We used to do these on a monthly basis. We sort of stop because right now, what you're really trying to do is to digest what we have. And so I thought it was important for us to get back together. I think. We could still get back together as one joint, maybe next again joint with finance, just to look at those other four or five. But I think you've squeezed about every drop of dollars. You know, this last time, I think we're starting to bang against uh, you can squeeze that and nothing comes out anymore. That really is a scary one. There, you've had a lot of bidders. I mean, on that sewer line, I mean, huge savings there. Yeah. I mean, because it's a combined savings, it was savings that we already took from the five down to the 2.9, and then from the 2.9 down to the 1.7, you guys. So that's that is where a little bit of a somebody, I think everybody is doing that. I think every company, everybody out there is pausing a little bit and, and they're getting a little bit of of um savings or BE out of their process. I think you know, some of the companies that we've seen that with Meta. You know, I think they're they're going to squeeze more money out of this project, not less. I mean, we're in a transition period in our country of in technology and everything. And so everybody sort of tapped it and they're making savings. They're taking a project that was going to cost X and they're saving like we've saved. So we need to make sure we look at that and everything we do. Is there any value engineering we need to do? Is there anything we can change it? Take a breath. I and mean, you know that and I've been a proponent of Let's take a breath and see if, if all these projects that we've got, how much are they really going to cost us? What do we need? Same story. We'll be here until noon if you guys want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Thank you. Done. Thank you, sir.